Okay, we're gonna be checking the uh, piston rings end gap. So we have our specs here from Chrysler. Okay, so we put our piston ring in there. Try and get it as square as you can, but to make sure it's completely flat, you're gonna take your piston upside down into the bore, push it just a little bit, just until you're even, about right there. Easily pull this back. Okay, then we're gonna take our filler gauge into that gap. Okay, so we found the one that it's the largest one that fits in there. 0.010 inch. So that is within spec. So any bigger and it doesn't want to go in. Any smaller it goes in very easily. So that is well within spec. So now we want to carefully remove the piston ring. Okay, so we know that one's good. The top compression one is good. So we can mark that. Um, for each cylinder, I've actually set aside. So I have six packs of piston rings and each one is marked per cylinder. That way if I need to trim any of them, then I know which ones go where. So we're gonna repeat the same process with both the, or all six sets of rings. Um, make sure we're all within spec. That's all there is to it. Uh, different specs for each ring, so make sure you have your manual that tells you. So the second compression ring is a little bit different, so cool. We're going to be installing uh, piston rings now. I went ahead and chose to stick with Mopar. <coughs> I have the factory service manual here saying where they want the rings basically installed. So. The uh, oil control ring is what you're going to put on first. If you look at here, we have an arrow, and then they've actually marked three different positions. Basically, your three positions where they want the oil rings installed or the gaps installed. So it's pretty easy. Um, if you've never installed rings before, you can do this with one of your ring expander tools. But I think it's just as easy to do it with uh, just with your hands. So um, you're going to set Basically, you're going to start where the, the piston ring needs to set, and you're going to very gently just apply a little bit of pressure and let it curl around, just like that. Oil control ring is the easiest, it's the most pliable. Um, so the oil control ring, if you're looking at your marks, um, and if you're looking at the front of the engine, if the front of the engine is basically a 12 o'clock position, this is going to be basically your seven o'clock position and then your second compression ring is going to go to this mark and your top compression ring is going to go to this mark you have two steel rails um, and you're going to just stagger them as well so the control ring gap is going to go here then one steel rail is going to go here then the other steel rail will go there so you're going to do the exact same thing um, uh, to start the, the top steel rail first and get it in the groove and then just gently expand the ring a little bit to allow it to slide in position. Just like that. Make sure it's set in there correctly. Okay. So you have the oil gap there one steel rail and then the other one will go here Try not to scrape the uh, crown when you pull it down, make sure you're pulling it away. Okay, so those are staggered correctly. <coughs> we have our second uh, compression ring, um, which also helps with oil by scraping it down. This one has a little bit of a, uh, a lip on it, um, and you want to make sure that lip is facing 
down towards the, uh, the oil pan. Um, see if that'll focus in there. Basically that little lip needs to face down. That's what helps scrape the oil off the cylinder walls. Okay, that one is going to go uh, towards this mark. Our oil ring is uh, capped right here. This one, the gap will be up there. These are a little bit harder to do just because they are much stiffer. So you're just going to pull it around just like that. That's it. Okay. Uh, one one step you should do as well. Um, if you're reusing your piston, take this and slide it around. This should slide very easily. Um, I'm reusing my pistons. They're within spec, but I did notice either when I pulled it out from disassembly or what, there was just a little teeny tiny bit of a metal burr here. And as the piston ring was sliding, it would stop it. And I noticed it wouldn't it wouldn't allow the ring to move around and that's important um, for it to be able to move around to seat correctly so I just took a very small file and just filed off that burr so make sure make sure it can move around freely okay and the last ring the top compression ring is going to be um, towards this mark so according to Chrysler or at least according to Mopar it mentions this top groove compression ring. I don't know if this is a generic picture um, or what, but it shows this little groove there. And this ring does not have that groove. And according to the service manual, it shouldn't have that groove either, but it does say that the top will be marked with an ID mark. And none of these have been marked with any ID mark. Um, I bought six of them. For six cylinders not a single one has any ID mark on it whatsoever I did a lot of reading online um, there's very little data to show if it is supposed to have one if it's not supposed to have one I don't know but it according to the service manual the only one that mentions being important for which side goes up is this middle one it says the edge must face down or the lip must face down when it talks about the top one, it doesn't say anything about which way it has to face. So just looking at it with the naked eye, it looks identical no matter how you flip it. Um, so for me, it looks identical. The manual doesn't say anything about it being flipped one way or the other. So as far as I know, it doesn't matter which way it goes. But there's no other way I can verify that. Um, I've looked at this thing a lot and can't find any marks at all. So. Anyway, the gap on this one is going to go in this direction. This one's actually pretty easy because it's very large. The gap on it is very large, so it sits in there pretty easily. Just like that. Okay. Make sure all your rings move around easily. Okay, and then uh, just before you install them, make sure they're still in the correct position. Um, and then also have someone double check, make sure all of them or all of your middle rings are facing the correct position as well. So that's it. That's it for piston rings. Um, we've already checked the clearances on them. We put them inside uh, the cylinder walls. We checked our end gaps. They were all really good. We've honed the cylinders, we've cleaned them, all the journal bearings are clean, so these are actually ready to go back in now.